or the other. For example, if you are writing an AI code, uh, you need to know how to get the training data because you have to teach the AI to learn about what you want it to do. So usually we have what you call data sets. So this data sets will uh, will have the uh, what do you call it? We'll have all the training. Think of the data set like your textbook. You read the textbook to learn something. So the computer reads the data set and trains on the data set to learn how to uh, do the task that you want it to do. Simple example of file is also the uh, password in your phones and your computers. Um, if you write your username and password, how does the computer decide to allow you in or not? It's because it already has a copy of the username and password somewhere in the computer. So if you try to log in, it opens that file, take the saved username and password and compare it with the current username and password. So whatever you do, in most of the cases, uh, uh, real coding requires one form of file or the other, okay? So, uh, so the objective of today, so the objective of today's lab is to um, learn how to read and write files and uh, process the data and handle exceptions. So what are exceptions? Errors, okay? Um, if you type something like, zero division error. no, zero division error. exactly like zero division error or um, file not defined, uh, uh, sorry, variable not defined. For example, if I say, uh, x equal to y times 2. If I try to run this, the computer would give me, you, if you look at, uh, if you look at the screen, you would see that we have um, an error message, right? The error message has this name error in red line. The name error is the name of the error that occurred, okay? So the compiler tried to do something and then it couldn't do it. So now it's telling you why it cannot do the task that you give it. So uh, at the bottom, you would see an explanation of what that name error is. For example, at the bottom here, we see name y is not defined. That means I don't know what y is. Okay, so if you want to, uh, avoid this ugly error message showing up to the user. Remember, if you finish the code and you compile it, it should look like uh, your um, web app. So the user will just run the code and the outputs will be showing. Most of the time, the users don't even know what the code means. Uh, he just wants to input his data and get some kind of output. So um, to avoid showing this kind of errors, you can just come here and say, okay, try. Um, try running this code. That's what you are telling the computer. Try running this code. If there is an error, if there is an error, run whatever is under the accept uh, path, okay? So we can say print an error has occurred. So if we run this, you can see it, whenever there is an error, we'll see an error has occurred. 
Okay, so uh, if um, if we have uh, a value for y, if we run this, now we don't have that message because there is no error. Okay, so you can also have uh, user friendly messages because not everybody can understand the uh, jargons that are showing on the screen. For example, if I have one divided by zero, nobody, no, uh, at least. At least most of the users that we are expecting to use this app may not be able to may not be able to read this, right? Yes. We can make this more user friendly. For example, we can just copy this name for the error. Okay. And we can add an exception here. Uh, And then we put the name of the error, and then we put column. There is no need for quotation marks for the name of the error, just the name of the error. And then you can print something like You can even ask him from which school are you, if you want. So, so for example, if we have uh, somewhere in our code, here we can say, okay. And then uh, if we try say z equal to, now if you try running this, you can see that the code started fine. It run line uh, two, right? Uh, it run line three, it printed the output for line 3 and line 4, which is x equals 0. But then when it tried doing the division by 0, it uh -huh. got an error. So what did it do? It went straight to the type of error that occurred and print the message for that specific type of error. So we are just telling the user, dude, you can't divide by 0, right? Um, any questions so far? Okay, so if you look at this structure, it behaves like an if statement. But this if statement is just for the compiler to know what to do in case of errors. So try this code. If there is an error, check the error name. So if it is divided by zero, print this. If it is any other error, just print line nine. Any questions? Yeah. If there are two errors, if you remember your code runs from top to bottom, the first error it hits is the only error that it will trigger, uh, is the only exception that it will trigger. So in this case, if we um, say uh, this is k, right? So k is unknown, so this is a name error, right? So but um, since the name error is at the top, the divide by zero error will not run. Uh, sorry, will not show because uh, the, 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 the first error your code will see is the error in line three, not the error in line five. Okay? So that's why it takes time to debug uh, code. Uh, even in reality, the errors come from top to bottom, so some of the errors may hide if you have thousands of lines of code. 
And that's why some people are paid to be testers. They just test the code, try possible things, and see whether the code will fail. They are game testers. The, when new games come out, these guys are paid to go out and buy burger and donuts and coffee and just play the video again. That's their work. Luckiest guys in the world, I'm telling you. So you test the game, figure out whether there are some mistakes, and then you just write a report and they pay you millions. What can you do? Okay, so um, that's what exceptions do. Uh, now, let's try this example. Uh, in this example, what they said is um, read two country data files. The first data file is called uh, lab 10 world, world population.txt and uh, lab 10 world area.txt. Both files contain the same countries in the same order, which means if you open the files at the same time and you are reading the files, um, you are reading the area of the country and the population of that country at the same time, if you are reading the files at the same time. So that's what that line is saying. Write the file lab Pop, uh, sorry, lab 10 world population density .txt, that contains country names and population densities, people per kilometer square, uh, with uh, country names aligned left and uh, numbers aligned right. So the first thing, uh, well, the issue is you first need to understand uh, how does the computer works, right? Uh, discard this. So, whenever you see, the main thing is you want the processor to solve your problem. That's all you wanted to do when you are writing, or you want to do when you are writing your code, okay? So, in that case, the processor itself is the mudir, right? We are just trying to make the guy happy so that he does our work for us. So you have this problem and you want to give it to the processor. So what do you do? You put the problem on the table. Uh, the table in this case is called the main memory. Is that uh, ugly guy you see? I, it looks something like this with some chips here. So the memory, what it does is, you if you put your task inside the memory, okay, then the processor would start taking, based on your code, in fact, the code will also come on the memory. So the processor will start taking that problem and it will solve the problem. And then when it solves the problem, it brings back the solution and save it in the memory. Let's take an example of a video game. Your PlayStation is a computer, okay? Um, in fact, it's uh, more powerful than my computer, than this computer, because it has GPU, right? So if I try playing Call of Duty with the same resolutions on this computer as I would on a PlayStation, my computer will be slow, okay? So yeah, your PC is a very powerful computer. Now, um, the PC has the uh, CPU, the PlayStation, and it has a RAM, a memory, okay? I don't know the size. Do any one of you know the size? PS4. What's the latest anyway? Uh, 16 gigabyte? Uh, yeah, the RAM, 16 gig. PS5, yeah, I, I've been in this lab so long, I have no idea what's happening in the world, trust me. Uh, okay, so 16 gig, so let's assume this is 16 GB, okay? Now, that that is just saying we have 16 uh, gigabyte of memory, or we have 16 uh, billion, 
spaces where we can put things in the memory. So um, the problem is when you are playing the game and uh, you are tired, you want to shut down, what do you do? You save the state, right? You save the stage you are playing. Why do you need to save? Because if you turn it off, you, it, everything will get lost. This is the problem of RAM. It does not store things. It's just like leaving your things on the table. Yeah, you guys are honest people, but if you have some crazy people coming from somewhere, they will just take everything, right? Even if you go to the police and you tell them, oh, I left it on the desk, they would say, why would you leave it on the desk? So the RAM is like your desk. It will lose things. So what do you need? You need a bag to put all your things so that when you need it tomorrow, you can bring it out. So that's why you have the hard disk. I'm not good at drawing, but just assume this is a disk, okay? This is actually how the inside of the disk looks like, allegedly. So this is how, so this is the disk and this is the head that is writing the data on the disk. So what happens is that you, uh, whenever you finish, you, whenever you want to shut down your game, you save. The process of saving is whenever you take the data and you put it in the hard disk from the memory. When you come back the next day, what do you do? You load it. Loading is the process of taking that data and putting it back on the RAM so that you continue playing. Simple as that. Okay? So, how do you do this in Python? Because most of the video games you are playing are actually developed using Python and Blender. Uh, the Blender app. So, how do you do this with Python? You use the keyword, if you want to load, you use the keyword open. If you want to save, you use the keyword, uh, if you want to save, save. Open is for loading. If you are loading the game on the memory and you want to play the game. Uh, if you want to close everything and save the game for tomorrow, you use the keyword Close, barakallah. Close. Okay, so let's see how to use them. So, um, to make your life easy, always save the files that you want to use in the same folder with the, uh, uh, with the, with the code. Okay, yeah, this is on. So, on the desktop, section 61. Oops. Uh, Okay, exceptions, this one. So I have everything here. If you look carefully, you will see world area, you will see world population files, and you would see my, uh, 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 what do you call it, the, uh, the lab tasks. So um, if I want my new file, this one. So let's call it um, density, example so if i save this and you check here you would actually see it can you see it so what i did is i make sure my file and the input files are in the same folder just to make life easy you can do it when they are not in the same folder but the absolute path yeah you get the absolute path like, um, what did I do now? I locked, sorry. So you can get the absolute path by, say, by copying this. That address at the top. Okay, we don't need those stories. Okay, all right. Now, uh, since we know the file path, 
let's delete this guy. Okay, so we know the file path. All we need to say is open. Okay, so open, and then we write the name of the file since they are in the same folder with our code. Okay, so if you do this and you say, um, what's the name of the file? Lab 10 population. Now, whenever you read a file, whenever you open a file, the computer wants to know why do you open the file? What do you want to do? Yeah, you want to read or you want to write. Okay, so if you have to tell it, open this file for reading. Whenever you try to open a file for reading, the first thing the computer does is it looks for the file in the computer. In some, it has it, it's looking all over the place looking for this file. Okay, uh, if it finds the file, it opens it. If you remember, we said opening is taking the file and putting it on the uh, on the memory. If it cannot find the file, what's going to happen? By now, you guys uh, know what a computer, uh, are good friends with the computer. You have been writing code. So if it looks for the file and it couldn't find it, what do you think the computer would do? <laughs> yeah, you guys are good friends with the computer. So yeah, it will just start shouting, complaining, can't find the file, and so on, putting all red lines everywhere. Error. So, for example, if you have something like this, and if you do it, you see all this just because it cannot find the file, right? So, this is the name of the error. They call it uh, no file not found. Okay, file not find found error. So, but if the file is found, it will open it. If it opens it, it takes it from the it takes it from the hard disk and it puts it on the memory. If you remember, we said the memory 16 GB for PC uh, for PlayStation, there's 16 billion possible places to put the file. How is it going to find the file if it puts it there? It's like you getting lost in the desert, right? Um, so how do you find the file? When it puts the file, it takes note of the address or the location where it keeps the file. So you need a variable to save the location of the file. So that means, how do we modify this code? What should I add? Barakallahu fiq, a variable. So I can say um, uh, population file. Let's add rd to remember that it's for reading. So the population file, uh, this variable will store the location of the file. So from now on, whenever we want to do something to this file, we use this variable. Because this is the variable that knows the location of the file. Okay, so now we can just go, uh, for example, we can close the file by saying uh, the file name on the dot close. Barakallahu fiq. So this will close the file. Okay, always remember to close files when you are done with them. Okay, it's like just removing your flash without safely ejecting. Next time you open it, you may not find anything inside. Okay, all right, now let's see. Uh, we are trying to avoid this error. So what should we do? Barakallahu fiqh. So let's put a try. We can say, okay, try opening this file. Right, try opening this file. If you see uh, an error, if you see this error, 
tell me uh, what do we want to tell the user? Uh, the file. Barakallahu fiqh, file does not exist. Okay, so. All right, now, um, if everything is executed uh, fine, it will just finish the try and it will just come to the end and it will run uh, line six, close the file and everything is good. Okay, what else? We should open the other file too, the area. So I can just copy this. Guys online, do you have any questions so far? No, no. Okay. So now we have opened the two files. Okay. Now, um, if you open a file, how do you read it? If you remember, we said uh, just use population uh, dot read. If you say dot read, it will read the whole file. Uh, if you say dot read and you put a number, it will print, it will read uh, the amount of characters equal to that number. So in this case, if you put one, it will just read only one, one character. It will read the character from the file and it will give it to you just the same way input works. So we need a variable to collect that input. Okay, so we can say population line is equal to and we can actually print uh, population line. So if you run this, you see we just got only one character from this file, uh, this one. This is the world pop, so it has all this. Uh, whenever you see this arrow, it is um, it is uh, a tab. Somebody used the tab key instead of space. So here they were using space, but here they were using tab. Okay. Now we can just come here. If you put 10, it will read the first 10 characters. Okay. So now, uh, but you can read a whole line by using the read line keyword, not read lines. In plural, it will read all the lines, read line. Okay. Any question? All right. So if you do this, it will read the whole line for you. So now we have a whole line for the population. Well, what if I want to read the next line? Yeah, you just call the read line again. Simple as that. Yeah, for loop if you want to do it a lot of times. But for loop is, if you remember the last time when we did for loop, we said you use for loop when? When do you? When we have a lot of. Yeah, that's loop in general. When you want to repeat something several times, you use loop. But why, why, when do you use for loop and when do you use uh, why? why? Yeah, so if you know that amount of times you will do something, you use a for loop. But if you have no idea when it will finish, you use a while loop. Okay, so um, in this case, um, first let's prove that if you just put another read line, it will read again. Okay, so if you do this, you can see I have read two lines now. If you, uh, if you just remove this, so what will this do? What will this code do now? It will read the first line, and then when it comes to line six, it will read the second line, and overwrite the first line, right? Throw away the first line. And then when you try printing, it will print the second line. So 
if you run this, we'll just get only the second one. So like you said, what we need is a while loop. When will the while loop stop? Exactly. So, yeah, so just give me, you, you don't have to write, you don't have to tell me the condition in programming. When should you stop reading the file? Quotation, yeah. yeah, but what does it mean? No? Exactly, when you reach the end of the file, when you reach the end of the file and there is nothing to read, this variable population line will have nothing inside it, right? It will be empty. So if there is nothing to read, um, what does it do? So you will tell the computer, whenever population line becomes empty, so whenever population line is not empty, continue the loop. If it is empty, that means we have reached the end of the uh, file, so leave the uh, while loop. So don't confuse an empty file with the new with new line. So I know some of you guys have started thinking this. Uh, I've started thinking about uh, what if I have some file and then uh, somewhere. All right, so. Suppose that I have some space here, and then I continue. When the computer reach this space, what do you think is going to happen when it reach this empty stop. space? Stop. Stop. It will exit the while loop? No. no. Why not? Because it's, uh, gosh, a box, a box. There is new line there. The character new line is actually what tells the computer that this place is empty, go to the next line. Okay, so if, if you, um, if, if the computer comes to this place, it will see backslash n, new line. So the variable is still not empty. The only time the variable is empty is if it reaches the end of the file. Okay? All right. So the, we are sure this is going to work until it reaches the end of the file. Okay. Um, okay, so we have this. Okay, now what else? Um, we should read the other line area uh, equal uh, what's the name? uh population area okay this should be area line so uh, area file dot read line so if you look at this for loop what it will do for us is that it comes into the while loop So it comes into the while loop. Here we will do something. We'll do something here. So we come into the while loop. We do something. We read the next line. We go back and test that line. We come into the loop. Uh, my, um, uh, process that line. Then we take another line. And then we go back into the while loop. We process it and so on and so forth. Does it make sense? All right. Okay, so um, what we'll do here is we have the lines. 
you have seen them. It's just a text. So if you look carefully at the lines here, we have this text, and if we like, we can break the text uh, into its components. For example, in this case, we can break it into the words and the numbers. Uh, you use split to do that, the keyword split. So you can, if you just say split, what split will do is it will look for new line, um, comma, sorry, new line, space, and tab. Okay? And it will, if it finds them, it will break the input according to them. So, for example, if you look at this number five, American Samoa, what the computer will do here, if you put split, is that American will be one element, uh, Samoa will be another element, and this number here will be another element. Okay, so um, let me show you this. So if you come here, let's put a break here. So that it, it doesn't, oh, whatever. Let's just print everything and see what happens. So um, uh, that population, we want to break it. So population line dot split. What is split in Arabic? Yeah, Faso. Yeah, Faso. Faso. Population. Right? So we break the population. Now, if we try to print fossil population, what do we get? You will get a list. So you see, now I can easily process this data. But look at where we have a list. You see, the first one, it breaks it into the country and the number of people. The second one, too. When it came to American Samoa, you see, the American and the Samoa are the name of the country. But now, because I'm breaking using space, now I have American as one element, Samoa as another, and then I don't want that. So, um, now? Yeah, we can split with the tab, right? So, for example, if you look at the, uh, if you look at this, if we split with the tab, we'll have only two elements, okay? But we have a problem with the other file. In the other file, the first two are spaces. They don't have tab. See, they don't have the arrows. So, we should use area to get the name of the country, right? Because uh, the file with the area, everything is tab. But for the file, for the population, these first two are not tab. So we should use the other, but since they are the same, na the same name of countries are arranged in the same order, so let's just use the other file. Okay? So for population, Okay, so for, for population, because the first two are using space, we will leave it this way. But if we want the number, how do we get the number? The number is the one at the end. Right? It's the, the number is always the one at the end. So we'll just say len of fossil population. Right? minus one so if you run this uh what did i do now? ah no wonder it just stopped talking to me this guy has no idea what he's doing let me just go so you can see we get the numbers isn't it now um but these numbers are still string so we have to convert them to integer so we'll just change this to we will say population is equal to int, and this will give us 
and this will give us the population all right then we can use the same technique fossil area right is equal to and then we say area dot split but this time around we want to do it using the tab because we want the country to appear in one uh, bunch so we'll just come here and say all right uh, country which of the elements will be the country first thank you fossil area um, element zero will be the country and the other one will be the area right which is equal to fossil area element one but this is a number so we convert it to integer isn't it because if you check the area you would see they are all integers okay they should be float but you know so now we have the two numbers how do we get the population density density is what is equal to population barakallahu over area some so we need to check for errors because we are divided by area if the area is zero we are going to get in trouble right so what do we do we check if yeah we can do try or we can just avoid it yeah we can say okay if uh, area equal equal zero uh, sorry not equal to zero then do the division right if it is not equal to the euro do the division else density uh, density is equal to density is equal to what let's just make it zero since there is uh, no area place any questions so far what is the line 15 to line 18 we can make it even better how can i make it better i can just say okay just um, i can just do this right density is zero if area is not zero we calculate density if it is not zero what will be density yeah. zero which is the same as doing else equal to zero right so just zero if it is true do the calculation if it is not just leave it the way you find it okay now we can print the result so print uh the country right uh, the country is um, percent s because it's string and the numbers are in float right so the numbers will be what percent f point two f okay so we can make the uh, we can make the string like uh, 20 characters uh, okay so now we can just have this and we can put um, what else the country and the uh, density okay so if you run this what do you get we get the countries and we get the uh, digits we can do minus one barakallahu feek we can just come here and put minus 20 so that the countries will be left aligned right so if we do this looks better any questions yeah
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you have zero, you have one. The index will depend on how many uh, parts it broke the item to. Because it will keep breaking things and it will keep uh, putting them. Uh, have you ever, you guys, anybody has been to the village? Uh, have you ever drink uh, sugar cane? Uh, the sugar cane. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Of course. So, do you know, how do you break it? If you look at it, it has some joints, yes. right? So think of those joints like the space or the tap. So if you want to break, you come to the joint, you break it, you give somebody, you break it, you give somebody. So what split does is it looks for those joints and it break the string. So if it sees space, it will break. If it sees tap, it will break. If you give it command and you say do not break in space, just break in tab, like we did here, so it will only break where, wherever it sees tab, and it will arrange them in a, in a list. Okay. All right. So this is what we have now. All we have to do is put it inside a file. So what do we do? We open a file for writing. Barakallahu fiku. So we'll just come here. And we say um, uh, open, and then we give the file a name. Uh, we can call it Kitabul Density. That's because I don't know what density is in Arabic. Dot txt. Okay, and we are opening it for what? For writing. Okay, so all we have to do now is uh, we need a variable because if the computer opens this file for writing, it will open it on the uh, memory. So that's why if you are typing something in Microsoft Word and you forgot to plug your computer to the mains and your battery runs out, you lose what you are writing because you didn't save. So we have we need the we need to create a name for the file. Let's call it density file so that we can be able to write inside it and we can be able to print uh, sorry save it. Okay? So now if we come here instead of print what do we do? We save inside the file. So we already know the name of the file that we want to save inside. Uh, what's the name? Uh, density. Sorry, we know the location. Density file. Uh, what am I doing? Density. Yeah, Kitab density is the name of the file on the computer. But if we bring it into our code, we give it a variable so that we can easily use it in our code. So instead of the real name of the file, we will be using the variable, okay? So we'll take this variable, we'll put it here, dot write. dot write, exactly. So you will just say dot write, and then you just remove this print. Simple. It will put that file, it will put this, the output inside the file, just the way it puts it on the screen for you. So you just remove the print and just put right. That's all. Okay? So uh, what do we do now? Um, let's run it and see. Oh, Barakallahu fi. We have not been closing things. So I don't know. All right. So we have area file dot close. We have... Uh, density file dot close so if we run this if we come here we would see that this is our code right so the computer will create the new file in the same uh, folder so this is the the book that we have written right 
So what can we do to this book? So we can just uh, double click and open it and see what we have. Th the problem is no spaces. no spaces. Everything is in one line. Everything is in one line. So what do we do? Barakallahu feek. We just come here and put backslash n. So now if we run the code, what do we have? Now let's check this file and see what we get. So if you open it now, Bismillah, you would see that everything is aligned. Any questions? Questions? All right. So um, uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me through WhatsApp. Maybe if you are tr trying, you would see some uh, questions. 